as the next generation of young stars set out on their rugby journey, at the other end of the scale, a long-standing servant has made the decision to retire. London Irish and England winger Topsy Ojo recently brought the curtain down on his illustrious 16-year career, finishing as both his club's record appearance holder and try scorer. The 33-year-old is already adjusting to the challenge of life after rugby. It's a funny one, you know, because I guess with kids and everything, the one thing that everyone talks yeah. about is sleep and making sure you get enough rest. You kind of just adjust and get used to it because you can't really tell them to sleep or that you want to lie in, so you, you kind of just have to adjust and get used to operating with different levels of sleep and rest. I think um, as an athlete, if you're lucky with injuries and things like that, you think you're invincible and that you can go on. Um, I guess as life becomes more real, especially when there's kids involved in that, you do start to become a bit more aware that you need to prepare for a life outside the game. And actually, because of the rate of turnover for players moving on, I think as well, you become more aware, especially when your friends are doing it as well. I've had a lot of guys that I've played with over the years retire in recent seasons. So I've known over the last few years, yeah, this is yours. Here you go, you go have a look now. Um, I've known over the last few seasons that I was going to need to be prepared for retirement at some stage. So. Hopefully, I've done enough work now. I've got uh, quite a few decent projects lined up for the future, which, which will keep me going. Um, it, won't, it will be a lot different to playing, but hopefully it's enough that it not replaces, but at least takes over that part of my life, which, which has been huge for the last 16 years. We're really lucky with the lifestyle that we have, actually. We probably see Topsy a lot more than the average person does that has a Monday to Friday, nine till five. We're quite lucky that he's home. Fairly, fairly early in the afternoon, gets to do the school pick-up. Quite often can help with the school run as well, can't you? So I guess the downside is we never get our weekends to ourselves. That's the hard bit to manage. And obviously you have off-season, but we don't get um, to put holiday in like anyone else does. So um, that's been the difficult side, but um, it's got its pluses as well. Good. See you. Okay. Yeah, right. see you later. Mwah. Bye. See you soon. See you later, Nana. I've been in Sunbury since 2004. I tend to stay quite relaxed pre-game. Obviously, you don't want to be too relaxed. You don't want to go too far that way. But you just want to be in the best shape possible, both physically and mentally. And I mean, for me, I find just, just being relaxed, um, knowing as well that I've prepared properly in the week. I think that that's the big thing as well. So I know there's nothing else left to chance. It is just about delivering on the day. A graduate from the London Irish Academy back in 2006, the former England international has witnessed many changes during his time at the club, in particular, the attention to diet, training and recovery. Oh, yes, my turn. I'd say the, the biggest difference has probably been the advances in sports science and technology. So, you know, talking about the diet, for instance, I guess when I started, we had to sort our own food out. So breakfast in between trainings, you know, I would dash home, go and make some food, come back to training. Whereas now we're catered for here, so you could literally measure out your food to, to the gram. That's how specific we can get with some of the guys. The recovery period, for sure, is something that as you get older, you, you've just got to listen to your body and look after it because it definitely takes a day or two longer after games to recover. Um, you need to make sure that before you train, you have a really good warm out. Like I say, you, you're not 21 anymore, so you can't just come out on the pitch, start sprinting around, and then you're good to go. You've got to really take your time and make sure that you're prepared. Definitely, I, I have a better understanding of what I can and can't do, what I should and shouldn't. I mean, I think I could probably get away with more than most. I don't know if that's just <laughs> good metabolism, but for me, it's just balance. Everything in moderation. You can't be lax about it because it does mean a lot. With such rapid advancements in the game, Ojo has become increasingly aware of clubs developing potential talent at a much younger age. Size is probably the biggest one. I mean, how probably earlier players have got hold of for academies and 
you know, they're probably in the gym a lot earlier. Like I, I probably didn't hit the gym till I was about 17, 18. Whereas now I'd say probably by right about 13, 14, they're being educated in, you know, the benefits of strength and conditioning and managing their bodies. So they're not even out of school, I'd say, but from about 15, 16, you see them and you think it's, it's impossible that you're this side. I mean, they're, they're towering over you already. And that's been a, a big, a big notice, you know, just yeah, some of those guys, you're like, there's no way you're, you're 16 still in school, but they, but they are. And I guess that's the way the game has changed. Now the profile of players coming out is bigger, stronger, faster.